Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Absolute BSS, the casual petitive look at Bandai Namco's Battle Spirits card game, Battle Spirits Saga. See, I'm already so rusty. Um, I, I'm back this week. This is Cameron, one of your hosts, as always, joined by the two holding it down, the better of the three of us, Angel. How you doing, Angel? I'm doing good. What's up, Cam? Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Eric, how's it going? Hello. My mic did that thing where it cuts out. It again, did. I heard it. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was... I have this. There's there's something about the way I say hello that my mic is just like, no, yeah. we're not. I'm not putting up with that shit today. But anyways, hello, everybody. <laughs> and every time you do it, I wait to see if it'll happen. Yeah. And then it did happen. Yeah. It's like yeah, it orchestra. Does, yeah. You're going to break some glasses the way the high pitch noise goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time the crack in my studio window gets a little louder. And so you're going to hear the train outside just a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> I love when the train comes by though, because it's like it gets me a little hyped. It's like, yeah, right, it's like we're oh, rolling through. Woo, that's right. Um, but yeah, I, I'm back from a, a very long and exciting weekend in the Great White North of Minnesota. Um, <laughs> so not quite the Great White North, but right under it. Um, Caribou coffee is abundant, uh, not just Starbucks up there, and some keys were forged. Had a really Hell good yeah. time this weekend. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to catch up with you guys. What have you been up to? How's your How's your week been? I, I listened to um, another very fun uh, listener and Discord Q and A episode. So thank you both for handling that while I was driving on up. It was really fun to listen to, <laughs> and thank you to everyone in the Discord for sending questions. But Absolutely. yeah, how have you guys been? Well, I mean, those of you guys have been on Discord have been keeping up. I've been uh, I've been dead inside but it's uh, slam <laughs> i've been slam you know working 18 19 hour shifts uh this weekend literally i would go into work around 2 a.m or whatever 3 a.m and then we get off to like midnight the next day so Jeez. it's been uh it's been a rough couple days but uh i was able to finally open two booster boxes out of 13 that i have to open so um, oh my gosh i was wow. able to at least yeah my second one was able to pull a spr strong draw so i was pretty excited about Let's that go. i think i pulled all my gale stuff within two boxes so that was pretty cool as well um and i'm finally starting to get some of the purple stuff so i'm excited to open those packs man like I, i'm not gonna lie like opening set three has been i mean i only have done two boxes obviously but um it's been very fun like just I feel like I don't know. It's just the artwork, something about the cars, and even the uh, the hollow foils. Like just I don't know. Just just feel good. And those little I'm not gonna lie. Them tokens are really cool. With how they yeah. like transpired in oh, animations yeah. for it. So that's pretty cool. Um, apart from that, I mean, I've been trying to snap it on my work breaks as much as I can on the new season. So still going strong on that. Trying to hearthstone it when I can. But that's about it, man. I've been just trying to keep up with all you guys in the Discord, <laughs> Pasadena, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, um, and just seeing everybody's bruise and stuff. So I see a lot of uh, the meta is very uh, open wide for sure right now. So and I, I love to see yeah. it. So yeah. What about you, Eric? Uh, well, first of all, this is for when you get to open the rest of your boxes. No bad luck this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not good. <laughs> you said 13 boxes. Is that all set three or is it like various No, nah, it's all set three. So what happened was, wow. so I had order from two different um, shops. One shop said that they were going to cancel my, or half of my order because something with Bandai or whatever. They couldn't make me demand or whatever. So I ordered the remaining from another shop and then they came back after the fact said hey i would catch you fulfill your order so i was like all right <laughs> so yeah. i ended up just having yeah. more which, which is fine <laughs> like look i'm not tripping i need it I, hopefully i have a whole place out of everything which i'm sure i will and you know fill up my binder with all the sprs and i just buy very minimal so i'm okay with it you can never have enough battle spirit cards so i guess I'm okay so. With it. so yeah like when a box yeah. showed up i was like i was like what is this and i opened it up i was like oh cool it's my boxes and then like literally the next day another box showed up i was like the hell so I, was like, so I hit him up i was like hey man did you send me this and he's not i was for your order i was like hey i'm not complaining whatever so <laughs> i'm cool with it damn <laughs> so no that's nice i um i opened all my boxes as well i did not get any strong draw spr but really? i'm just gonna yeah i'm just gonna be okay with it i guess um <laughs> did you pull some of the did you pull some of the regular ones though at least uh, yeah, I have. I did pull one foil one, like a regular oh, wow. foil, which I thought was actually pretty neat. That is cool. Um, and then uh, the rest are just like the regular rarity. Right. But um, yeah, those are hard to get. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Brandon and I were talking ones. last night. I think he's right. I think it's about one per per box, I think. Because uh, 
Unless like it's a hollow fill, he said, because I want to say yeah. I literally pulled one the first box as a common one, and then my second box I pulled the SPR one, and then the last pack I pulled another common one. So I think it might just be one per box, which you know what? But it's cool, right? Like I'm not gonna lie, like set three is game changing over set two. Like literally, my first box yeah. and I pulled, I pulled like my first SPR. I think like third pack in it was the. Um, I forget what it is. It's a yellow SPR, the little roast looking thing. Um, oh, the queen? Like, Man, the queen, yeah. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Put set, some you know, respect set... on my queen's name. Sorry, so I just forgot the name, you know. <laughs> I just forgot the name. But, like, but set two, though, you know, I'd be like two boxes in, three boxes in. It's like, where the hell is the SPR? So I was like, this ain't even fun opening this crap. It's like, yeah. So, sorry, no, I'm going to rant. Continue. No, you're totally right. You're totally right. Set three has been like a joy to open. I yeah. like. I, I pulled two, I got four boxes total, I think. I got two inter interdimensional rift SPRs cool. and then two of the, uh, the like, little, the gar the white guardian card. I can't remember his name. The Frost Tiger, uh, I think? Frost yeah, Frost yeah, Tiger. Yeah. 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 yeah, which I don't, I don't know that he's actually that great right now, but I could see him becoming good as time goes on. So I think maybe I'll be happy that I have the SPRs of those. Yeah. Um, also, two of them feels pretty right. Like, I probably would never... He doesn't really seem like a four-of kind of card, at least in, in Unless you're building idea, an so. entire deck around him and Scotty. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But it's cool, though. I, I, I definitely have had a lot of fun opening it. Um, I did have to order, like, a couple of singles of the X-Rares, but I managed to do it before everything skyrocketed in price. Nice. Uh, like, I picked up... My last shot in Jaeger for like nine bucks at the time, and then I picked up my last Genbu for like seven. What are they so, at right now? Nice. I think they're both at like twenty. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie though, it's new for us because you know we've been kind of spoiled the last two sets for price to be mm -hmm. normal. But yeah, I'm kind of glad the prices are climbing up. You know, or kind of like it just makes the cards work a little bit more. But I am too. Yeah. It means I think it means that more people are into the game or really interested into this set, yep. um, which, yep. is, which is good to have. So, you know, I know it sucks for our wallets a little bit, but I, I love to see it. So as long as it'll be, I like, rather... super crazy, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! prices, I'm right. okay. <laughs> it's like, I, would, yeah. I would rather Shot and Jaeger be a $20 card and lots of people are loving and enjoying Battle Spirits yep. than Shot and Jaeger be an $8 card and nobody's playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Agreed. Like, Absolutely. So it, it's healthy for the game. It definitely yeah. is because yeah. uh, it's not too expensive. And looking in, you're like, oh. Oh, that card's twenty bucks. Might buy a pack yeah. here now and then, you know, support yeah. the game and it, see what it, I can hit. It, it makes buying the booster boxes a little more fun too, because when yeah. you pull something, you're like, Oh man. I think Angel and I, you and I talked about this last time where I was like, I'm a little mouse with my mouse brain and sometimes <laughs> I get the cheese, you know? I <laughs> so, I was cracking yeah. up when you said that. I was like, That's <laughs> such a perfect way to put that. Um other than that, I've been playing some games in the Discord with uh different people. Um I've been playing some games with Andrew in our Discord, which he's a really good player and he has some really, really like top tier decks that mm -hmm. um, I've been able to throw some of my pooky concoctions up against and see kind of what sticks. Uh, spoiler, pretty much everything I've tried that is like not a meta deck has just completely died to <laughs> the meta decks. But, uh, you know, it's been fun, though. I, I Last night we did play a game where I tested out this like rainbow list that I'm working on and it actually did pretty good, so I'm, I'm going to keep playing around with that. Um, there's just some really good cards, one of which we're going to talk about in a bit later today, so I'm not going to say too much, but I think there's a card that some people are sleeping on personally, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, yeah. What about you, Cam? Tell us all about all your adventures. <laughs> so I just want to preface this by saying there will be a timestamp in the description if you want to skip past the Keyforge stuff, because I, I might end up getting a little passionate and go on a little roll here. Um, <laughs> so if if you if you want to skip and get right to the Battle Spirit stuff, um, or just aren't aren't interested right now, want to come back to it later, there will be a timestamp in the description. Jump ahead to this time, and we'll start talking about Battle Spirits. But yeah, I um I just got back from the first ever World Championship for Keyforge. Uh, it was up in Roseville, Minnesota at Ghost Galaxy's or, or near Ghost Galaxy's headquarters, uh, the Game Center, which was originally, I think, a, fan of, a fan, final, wow, a Fantasy Flight uh, Games kind of building or affiliation there. But it was uh, originally a Final Fantasy boss monster yes. uh, battle location. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So you went in there and, like, uh, oh, now I can't think of the last 
the boss for the very first Final Fantasy game, something like Omega or whatever. But yeah, no, I uh, <laughs> Ghost Galaxy recently picked up the IP for Keyforge after it was dying, after they had to cancel the original World Championship last year uh, to celebrate all of the fun things that Keyforge was getting ready to do in the year of 2023. They held something called Keyforge Celebration. So I got married last year and was on my honeymoon during Keyforge Celebration. So we we weighed the 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 importance of both of those events and you know I'm honestly surprised that you all did not spend your honeymoon <laughs> at Keyforge Celebration. Like yeah. that would not have surprised me at all cuz no. you're both pretty big fans of Keyforge, so <laughs> we the compromise was we actually put a couple of boxes of Keyforge on our wedding registry. And so a friend of nice. ours bought those for us and we took those uh, to Hawaii on our on our honeymoon. Nice. nice. Um, but all that to say, this year rolls around. Um, Keyforge Celebration Two Extra Crispy KFC was uh, being held in conjunction with the first ever Keyforge World Championships, and it finally fired off. We had um, players from Italy, from China, from Australia, um, and just other places from around the world come to Minnesota and a lot of players from around uh, the United States head up there. I think there were about, um, I think, I think someone said 160 players in the open tournament. Wow. So just, that's awesome. All of us packed into this place, uh, excited about and playing some key forge. So Friday was the, the first day and there was a last chance qualifier for this year's worlds. So the way it worked is there were going to be 32 seats for two different formats each. So Archon is a format where you bring one deck um, and you play that all day. Uh, the other format is Archon Alliance, where you bring a... This is Keyforge's version of construction, right? So you have, uh, at most, three different decks contributing one pod from that deck into a combined deck. Uh, so basically, you you have a little bit of agency about it, and it makes for some really fun combos. There's a limited list when it comes to that, just to make sure that you're not breaking the game. But um, yeah, can you combine like they have to be three different houses? You can't combine. Yes. Like... Okay. Gotcha. Right. So in Keyforge, yeah, the 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 whole poll is like each deck is randomly generated. You get a list of twelve cards for three different houses to make a thirty six card deck. So in Alliance. You still can't like double up on the same house or you'd be playing a lot of cards all the time. But yeah. what you can do is like if you open a deck that has a really fire uh, pod in it of 12 cards, but it's just not quite lining up with the other two houses, you can look at other decks within the same set and try to build your like ideal 36 card list of three different houses. So at, at first when it was announced, like we were kind of like... Why are you doing this? You know, they just bought the game and they... It's like Soul Forge, right? Like, right. That's how Soul Forge works. It, right? Yeah, Soul Forge is you get two half decks, you put them together and you play them. Um, so this is kind of like three third decks and put them together. <laughs> so the initial response for Alliance was pretty mixed, but it's definitely found its place in the community. And um, like a lot of competitive players actually really like Alliance. And especially because the World Championships this year... If you won the Alliance tournament, you got $12,500. So there was cash prizing for this on both sides. Archon, which is more traditional Keyforge, and Alliance, which was, at, at this point, at the end of its first full year in the organized play rotation. So, I mean, that's just a really cool thing to see, that both of these tournaments were well attended. And so this last chance qualifier, um, depending on how you ranked starting at whoever ranked at the top, depending on how many seats were open in each um, of the world championships this year, you could choose if you would like to participate in them. So the last chance qualifiers format, however, was sealed alliance. And sealed used to be one of the main formats that they kind of took away, which was also kind of controversial. Um, so it was just exciting to see an actual tournament on Ghost Galaxy's watch be a sealed tournament. It is still Alliance, so that means it's not you open one deck and you feel really bad, or you open three bad decks and you're like, I don't know what to do with any of this. You have a little more agency. Um, and this was my first competitive uh, playing of Alliance. So 
we all get three decks from set six, which is the current set that's available right now, Winds of Exchange. I do something a little, a little goofy, and I put together three different houses, and my token is a fourth house. So it, it's just all kind of goofy. Uh, and I ended up going 3-0 and in my first three rounds. Damn. And I was feeling pretty good. Like, this is the highest level of Keyforge, right? Like, this is the top. And it, famously, I went to Gen Con earlier this year and I scrubbed, <laughs> famously, out, <yeah. laughs> scrubbed out double elimination <laughs> style, played only two games. So uh, I was feeling good. Went into my fourth round. Lost very, very close game. And then round five lost uh, again. So I lost the last chance qualifier uh, with a record of three and two, which I'm super fine with. Very proud of. Uh, built a very fun deck. Nothing I could have done differently. You know? Um, the difference between this and Gen Con, right, is that when you lose in Gen Con, you get to go explore Gen Con. And you get to go hopefully fill your sadness and time with a bunch of other games, which is what I ended up doing last time with you guys. Um, but at Keyforge Celebration, they were, uh, they had like this very kind of duelist kingdom thing going on where your lanyard, you could turn it to a side that uh, basically says, Hey, I'm not in the tournament right now. Do you want to play a pickup game with these brand new decks called menagerie decks? So these are not tournament legal decks, but it's uh, they are. I don't even know how to describe this. So they're still ag algorithmically generated. They're all going to be unique, but they're just a little more tuned to produce combos. So like there is a combo in the game that people look for from the second set called Jenka, which is a card called Martian Generosity and a card called Key Abduction. So that is now a packet that the algorithm might look for when building a menagerie deck. So one of my menagerie decks is a Jenka deck. So in this list, I have two copies of Martian Generosity and one copy of Key Abduction. And so that's like my fun thing. And mm. I, I just have to say they nailed it with these menagerie decks. Everyone was just like so heated up about it. Um one of the houses you could get is actually a house from an upcoming set that's not even released yet. One of the houses oh, is... Oh, that's, yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> and one of the houses is actually from a spin-off game called Keyforge Adventures, where you can use any legal Keyforge deck to play against like an AI deck, right? Um, called mm. the Key Racken. And it's just this huge beast thing that you have to fight against. So in Menagerie, you could get the Key Racken and it's like arms as one house and play it like a key forge house so cool very very fun so while the tournaments were going on and finishing up i was out in the lobby meeting a bunch of like people from youtube that i've known for three years that i've never met people on twitter that i've known for three years that i've never met in person and we're all just having a blast like we're just playing key forge into the night and then <laughs> i get back actually and Eric, I think, texted me an angel and was like, hey, Angel, you guys, you, you want to run some Battle Spirits games? And he's like, oh, man, no, I can't right now. And my s sadistical ass was like, hey, Eric, I'll jump on and play a couple Battle Spirits games. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you want to do? <laughs> I just got back from playing 11 games of Keyforge that day. And yeah. then I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw down some Battle Spirits with Eric because I was just so pumped. Um, yeah. Which we can Keep get into games those rolling. games later, but um, <laughs> that was fun. So then Saturday was the start of the World Championships for Archon and Alliance. And so while those were happening, there were two open tournaments, the very first chance to qualify for 2024's World Championships. And so for this open, you could either bring an Alliance deck, Archon Alliance, or bring a single deck, Archon. So I brought the deck that I played at Gen Con earlier this year that I went 0-2 with. And I'm like, I'm just looking for one win with this deck because I know what it can do. I know it can perform. And I started off the day three wins in a row, zero losses. And that's huge. That's great for me. So it's still double elimination. So I get into round four 
again, one of the closest games I've ever played. Just the highest level of Keyforge. So exciting. Comes down to one turn, one card, one little piece of Ember. And uh, I lose that round. Go into round five, same thing. Just a battle to the very, very end. And I lose again. Go three and two in the first open for next <laughs> year's competitive season. And so I'm feeling great. I go back outside and I do some more Menagerie games. And then later that night, Christian T. Peterson, the guy who uh, was with FFG um, when Keyforge was being first published, uh, the guy who decided with his new small company was going to buy Keyforge and take over it, uh, he gives us a keynote presentation, talks about uh, the upcoming year for like organized play, um, getting back on a two set per year cycle uh, for Keyforge expansions, which is very, very exciting. Uh, alluded at some like storyline events, kind of like what Flesh and Blood does, and um, also <laughs> ended the keynote by saying, now if you all go to the back and you get this ticket that we gave you when you got here yesterday, we're going to do a Sealed Alliance tournament for set seven, which is set to come out in March of next year. Dang. So all of us got three decks of the brand new set Grim Reminders. Um, and we all just played three I hope rounds. Bandai's listening and taking some notes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I want to play set four next time, man. Yes. Yeah. It was awesome. And just the energy in that place was immaculate. The just the the love and care that was put into just the event and all of the like fun different prizing and, and stuff like that. Uh, oh, and that's the thing about Menagerie. Every two wins that you got, you would get a ticket for like a prize wall that had like a bunch of like really exclusive like mats and sleeves, and uh, you could get more decks if you wanted to. Um, and if you lost with your Menagerie deck twice, you would get a ticket to get another Menagerie deck up to three more. So I got four Dang. total oh. Menagerie decks. So like, Dude, that's awesome. You get a lot of, a lot of free stuff. Cards, oh my like, gosh. Stuff, man. I awesome. got yeah. so many decks. Um, and just like new ones, current ones, and future ones. Like it's just very, very cool. So it was just a really neat way to be like to meet the community, to to play some Keyforge. Even if you lost, you're still having fun and you can get a new deck and just get back into the battle. Like um a friend of mine on Twitter, I got to meet her there. Her first menagerie deck was a banger she went 12 and 0 before she got her first loss with it oh my god yeah Jeez. so then she's like competing with a couple other people there from like you know the podcast circuit for key forge who are like getting a bunch of wins and um like she was like probably top three like most winning menagerie player over the weekend um and so in the open archon tournament oh yeah i already said that went three and two in the open archon and then sunday was just uh, more menagerie for a while. You could. It was like your last chance to buy some exclusive decks and like cash in all your tickets. And then they held the top eight for Archon Worlds and Alliance Worlds. It's best two out of three. Um, some community members on Twitch who have been streaming Keyforge from the beginning called Tabletop Royale were there and broadcasting the event. Um, and I forget which tournament they won, but actually an Italian player uh one one of the like either the open one of the open tournaments or one of the world championships and um like it was just a really great representation about keyforge over around the world like they they traveled over yeah. here made a well couple thousand bucks and uh <laughs> it was just so cool it was really really great i don't I don't know if you remember this, but when um, Angel and I were in the Netherlands, it was like we saw Keyforge stuff everywhere. There was yeah. like one of my yeah. one of my opponents had a key, had his like custom Keyforge mat that he got from the GameFound campaign, uh, and then also like you know just we we saw Keyforge starter decks and stuff over in like all the game stores we went to. So yeah, um, pretty big game. There's a lot of people who love it. Yeah, and it's only it's 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 coming back. It really is. It's only getting better, and. Personally, like the coolest part for me that whole time, like besides getting to meet everybody that I've known um, online, uh, getting to play at such a high level and having some of the best games of my life and just laughing about how wacky those menagerie decks were and like what the new set's going to feel like. The best part of it all was that 
uh, my friend Bree from college at the same time had just decided to buy a display of Age of Ascension off Amazon. So it's like 20 bucks for 12 decks. You can do that right now if anyone's listening. Um, and her and a few of her Magic the Gathering playing friends from her local shop gave it a shot, right? And so mm. they're like texting me throughout the night. She's like uh, asking me a couple rules questions. And by the end of that night, this was on Saturday, she goes, we honestly expected to hate it. We honestly went in there and thinking it was going to be just like not as fun as magic, you know? And she's like, we were all having so much fun just fucking with each other and seeing all these weird little <laughs> interactions play out and like stealing stuff and blowing stuff up. It, she's like, it was great. We're all hooked. There's the train. Choo choo. <laughs> P4 type train. P4 yeah. type train. <laughs> so I just like, I was getting to secondhand see a love of Keyforge bloom while at the very first world championship for it. And it's just a game that I've loved and have been playing for five years and I thought it was going to die, but it's not dead. And it's, it's so exciting. So all that to say very long weekend, tons of exciting new Keyforge stuff for 2024. Um, Grim Reminders is set seven. It's coming out in the spring of 2024. And Ember Skies will be set eight. It's coming out in fall of 2024. Um, keep your eyes peeled. But, like, there's never a bad time to get into Keyforge. Every deck is legal. Every deck is viable. And um, I personally played against every type of deck. Like, a deck from all six sets at one point or another over the course of the weekend. So that's very, very cool. That's pretty cool. Did you notice in the uh, was there any pattern of like a specific set that might have been was doing a little bit better than the other sets, or was it pretty? It's even hard to say. Um, yeah. I I think because of recency bias and some cool things you can do with the token mechanic that was introduced in set six, uh, there were a lot of wins of exchange decks, um, which is yeah makes sense right like it's it's yeah. the one that you can catch more people off guard with because it's the newer one but also there are some really cool uh loops that you can get into um and i lost to a set six deck on saturday to lose and i was playing a set four deck and then i lost to a set five deck on friday and i was playing a mix of set six decks uh or something like that I might have mixed that up, but yeah, they, they were all pretty well represented, at least like four of the six. Set five and set... Set five is definitely the one that was least represented, um, but I feel like in Keyforge, set two was kind of like that. People were like, oh, Age of Ascension is bad, but then like a, a deck sold for $3,600, that's from set two, and that deck was like performing at the open. I think it made the top eight cut. Um, so I think set five is going to be like that. We're going to look back at that in like a year, probably. And a whole bunch of these, like probably at, at worlds next year, we're going to see set five come back really, really strong. And people are going to have no idea what to do with it. Um, hmm. and, and that's just another testament to the game. Um, and also, so ghost galaxy picked up the game, obviously for fantasy flight. And I think they explained that, like, Winds of Exchange, which is the current set that we're on, was, like, probably 80% done by Fantasy Flight. Grim Reminders was started and was probably, after all was said and done, about 30% done by Fantasy Flight. So set eight, which is coming out next fall, is 100% done by Ghost Galaxy. And I just can't wait to see what that looks like because Winds has been so fun. What I've seen of Grim Reminders already is is it feels like playing Keyforge for the first time. Um, and set eight being completely their own original ideas and IP, I, I just can't wait for. So it was a great time. That's awesome. I love it. That's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, was looking, I, was, I was looking right was, now at the uh, merchant, what was it called? The uh, Winds of Exchange, like a whole display box of like 12 decks. It's like 128 bucks. That's not bad. Yep. So that's and each, and each MSRP. Is unique, right? Yes. Each deck is unique. So. Oh. With Ghost Galaxy, like a deck is about twelve dollars right now each. Um, okay. With Fantasy Flight, it was ten bucks a deck. 
Uh, but you can still find those older sets really, really cheap. But the current ones, you know, they retain their value because anyone you open could be the best deck in the world. That's just the truth of it. And that's what keeps it exciting. So, yeah. I, I, gotta, I gotta say, man, I was rooting for you. I was so uh, saddened to hear when you got your <laughs> losses because I yeah. was like, oh, man, Cam's going to go 5-0 and oh, and then enter the world champs and then have this huge redemption arc and become the world champion. <laughs> I It, it would have been so yeah. cool, man. Like, what a Cinderella story. <laughs> Especially, like, so my plan was when I was, like, 3-0 and oh on Friday for the last chance, I was like, well, shit, if I get an invite into Alliance tomorrow, I'm just going to use my sealed Alliance deck. Could you imagine if that's how I won? Like, the way yeah. Richard Garfield <laughs> intended. You just opened three yeah. decks and you win worlds. So I was yeah. I was, I was, was trying to do that. But yeah, both days went 3-0 and and then immediately lost out. But that's a winning record. Um, yeah, still great performance. Thank you. Yeah. Above and beyond what I expected from myself after Gen, Gen Con. Con. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and the Gen Con deck did even better. Exactly. Not, so that, that's good. So no bad yeah. luck Your that Gen time. Your Gen Con deck. Your Gen is that, Con is deck that the deck that you won, mark. like, is that the game, or is that the deck that you played, like, I don't know how many games online that you were doing well yes. with? Yes. Yeah, I've okay. logged over 200 with that. 70% win rate. Jeez. That's so, crazy. Yeah. yeah, it still feels good. Those first three games, especially, like, it just, it, so I, I would talk to my opponents, right? Like, you know, everyone's asking, like, what are you running? And, like, you can you swap lists at the beginning of the game so you can see what your opponent has in their deck. So, like, <laughs> it was the same story all three of those rounds. It'd be, like, in the beginning, they're just looking at it and going, like, okay, okay. So not as nasty as some other mass mutation decks I've seen. And then at the end of it, they go... I didn't take that deck seriously enough. They're like you you had <laughs> you had stuff in there that I just didn't expect. And I was like, it can it can really roll if you know how to play it. Like it looks unassuming, but it's got tech for almost every situation. And so it was just performing exactly the way I wanted it to. The way that only I could do that. And that's what's cool about Keyforge. Like that list is public. You can scan it into the Crucible online. You can play it a bunch, but you're never gonna play my deck like I do. And that is the coolest part. I love yeah. that game. I love it. And set seven is so fun. It's so fun. And when does that one come out? Beginning of the year? Uh, yeah. So they are they crowdfunded this one too. There were some issues with Winds of Exchange. So like the international decks did not get out uh, nearly as early as America. So for this campaign, they're going to ship internationally first and then ship to the States. So we should get it around March or April of 2024. That's the plan. But, um, th I mean, they've already done it. So they're opening the pledge manager and getting all that set. But, like, the, the decks are printed. Obviously, we've been playing with them. So they're going to start shipping, hopefully, decks internationally at the beginning of next year. And, I'm sure uh, at this point it's just, like, logistics. Like, exactly. figuring out how to get all the decks to the right people. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it was really cool. You can, you can watch the keynote presentation on YouTube probably here in a few days. I'll probably link it to the discord when it comes out, yeah. just cause I like to keep updating some, um, some news with stuff there if anybody's interested, but yeah, so that's, that's my little, my little rant about Keyforge. I had a really fun time. So thanks for holding down the fort, angel and Eric. And I oh, am, my uh, God. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm very excited. Yeah, and if it, <laughs> Oh yeah. If, if anyone, if this is like your first time hearing about Keyforge, um, we have some videos on the channel that Cam's made, and also we do have a little Keyforge, a uh, very small Keyforge community within our Absolute BSS Discord that yeah. I would love to see grow into, uh, you know, just like a bunch of people showing off their deck lists and stuff in there. So absolutely, definitely join the Discord, and uh, if any of that's if, if you're interested in apps, if you're in interested in Battle Spirit Saga, obviously join our Discord for that. Yes. But if uh, Keyforge sounds interesting at all, there's there's a little community of people that have just started playing mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Cam's influence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm hoping to convert more. So, yeah, you know, there's yeah. crossover from card games all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not telling you to invest everything in Keyforge, but also it's not an investment. It really doesn't yeah, you don't have, have to, to be. So all yeah. I ask is that you give it a try, just like my friend Bree and, and her uh, MTG squad. And they had a great time over the weekend. They're going to buy another, another case of uh, decks and play again soon they're excited to explore it so you said that case of decks is uh 20 bucks right now on amazon yeah so it like fluctuates anywhere between like 16 bucks and 30 bucks but that's it you yeah. get 12 
unique decks for around yeah. 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, it's the second set, but like, you know, you might open one that rivals Pink Fraud, which sold for 3,600 bucks out of the same set. It could happen. Either way, though, I mean, you got a bunch of decks if you want to go half seas with a friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really you both cheaply. have six. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, those matchups are almost infinite in just a display of 12. Like, the, the game never plays out the same way. That's what's so good about Keyforge. Um, yeah. But now, I'm, I'm so pumped because Keyforge was taking up a lot of my time and energy, obviously. So... I need to get back into the zone, the absolute BSS zone, baby, because <laughs> at least Eric and I are going to Atlanta in December. There have been some really good... Um, uh, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> I was going to say... I thought Doug, Doug, I was like, a quack. Yeah, I, I, hit the wrong, a quack. I hit the wrong I, one. My bad. I was, like, I, I was just going to let no it... Look yeah, that's <laughs> there right. You there you go. So, like... I'm ready to shift gears. I'm ready to talk about what we're here for every week uh so just thank you for for being patient with me but eric what are we doing today what are we talking about let's let's get let's get ready i'm ready so, for next month last episode that you weren't here for which sucked because i wanted to talk to you about all the yellow stuff that was going on yeah coldplay <laughs> is uh, apparently playing uh absolute bss now because it's all yellow <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, the, well, things have actually shifted since then. Even. Okay, good. Cause uh, I'm going to play yellow yeah. and I don't want people playing yellow. So, all right. I'll fill, I know Angel, you, you've kept up a bit. I, I guess both of you have kind of kept up a little bit, but I just to kind of like last time we were talking about how the meta is, is like busted wide open and it still very much is. Right. Um, but we've seen busting. some. We've seen some decks kind of rise to the top lately, and it's um, honestly been pretty exciting because it's stuff that we really have not seen uh, so before. Cool. I mean, we've we, we've seen the, these colors at the top before, but they look very different uh, than they did when we've seen them rise up before. So uh, obviously, you know, yellow Fabled Beasts with Genbu rose to the top. I think to answer that, People in Brisbane and people at the Pasadena Grand Open started playing lots of red, but it's not the kind of red that you have come to know from previous Battle Spirits events, which is kind of cool. Um, and also, we've just seen like people who don't know what to play just playing some like really consistent purple decks or just getting wacky with it and playing like crazy rainbow builds and stuff. So that um, and is a healthy meta. Absolutely. Yeah. All of those pieces <laughs> together. Like yep. that is exactly what you want to see when you look at a competitive card game. That is yeah. so exciting. It's um I think a member of our Discord described it as a triangle format, which yeah. I could see it. Yeah, it's like triangle rock, paper, scissors format, however you want yeah. to describe it. Yep. Is like, you know, red beats yellow, but yellow beats um gale. But then Gale can kind of stomp on red a little bit. But then also purple's just sitting there like this consistent machine, just like yeah. drawing cards. And but then also if blue goes up against purple, maybe they'll mill you out. Like there's, yeah. it's just like there's a lot of stuff going on here that's really really interesting. Um, and so today I thought what we would talk about for our Battle Spirit Saga discussion. Uh, I don't know why I said that with such emphasis. It just felt right. I love um, it. Is uh, yeah, so I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd do kind of like a, a classic episode style that we've that we've uh, done in the past where we each come to the table with a few cards we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And these can be I thought we'd each come with three different cards. They could just be like from any set, but it's just for whatever reason in the current meta, it's like we're seeing this card pop up from an old set or we're seeing this new card from the new set do really well. Or maybe if you want, if you wanted to, you could bring up a card that uh, I know I have one of these that I want to talk about, but a card that used to be quite popular, but is not showing up anymore, even though the, the color that it's in is doing really well. So mm -hmm. um, just basically any cards that, that we feel like would be really interesting to discuss with the fact that the meta does feel like it's been busted wide open. So yeah, um yeah let's get started uh do you want me to go first since it was my little yeah, thing so that way put go myself on the spot absolutely <laughs> got, a spotlight. got a spotlight 
<laughs> I, I, I do want to say real quick while you're pulling up your card. I oh yeah, sure. I'm having such a hard time deciding if I want to play yellow, which I'm super comfortable with, or play blue that I'm having so much fun with. Like both will be fun, dude. Yeah, but both are valid. Like blue is just, I, it's so fun, and it's I it's was, its first I will set. Say this. For this being your first grand open, right, and you're competitive, always go with what you're comfortable with. That's fair. That's the best thing yeah. I can tell you because you at least will know how to get out of sticky situations. True. Kind of like when you talk about Keyforge, right? You know the deck. You know how to pilot the best you can. That's a good um, point. I would, for you being your first one, like if it was your second one and whatever, you just wanted for fun, or if you really got an invite or whatever. But yeah. I would recommend go with what you've been playing the most and you're comfortable with. So when you're in weird situations... You're not stressed out. You're like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. You're not sitting there like, oh, I don't know this deck enough to be able to get out of this situation. Right. That'd be my recommendation. With, so. Cool. With that, with that said, though, we do have some time. So if you really wanted to grind the shit out of some blue, like, I, I mean, too. that's my thing. <laughs> I, mean, that too. I mean, you got this a couple month, weeks, though. Yeah. This yeah. month, over the next couple of weeks, I'm only going to be playing my yellow build and my blue build. Um, I don't think I'm going to take Gale. I think it's really fun, and I have the pieces. Um, I just, I still think it's a little early for Gale. Gale's a dice roll right now. It it's is. Like either, yeah. either we'll do very well if you we can get everything going off, or people just prepare for it and it's like, whatever, bye. Yeah. Feral Slash, you're Harkin I, Highlands. Good luck to the rest yeah. of the game now. It's fun casual, so. though. I will say. It's really fun yeah. to yeah. just load up that deck into TTS and see what happens. But yeah, good point. Thank you, Angel. Coach Angel. For uh, no, well, hey, well, <laughs> I'll play yellow. Little whistle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Eric. All right, what you got? ready. For, so, I have. So this was the card that I was keeping as secret spice that I did not want to reveal on the last episode, Angel, that you and I talked about. Mm -hmm. Turns out my secret spice was already known by most people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, there were some other funky things I wanted to explore with it. But I will just talk about it as um, it showed up in the second place purple deck played at Pasadena, which was Costume Artist. Yeah, I pulled it up uh, before you said it, and I was going to see if yeah. I was right. I was right. Okay. Yeah. I was texting Cam. Uh, I don't remember why I didn't include you in this conversation, Angel. I think Cam and I were talking about something else, and then it just turned into me uh, fine, like gushing dude. about Costume <laughs> Artist. But uh, it was like a while ago when I first kind of read the card really closely. I was like, damn, that card is amazing. I'll, I'll read it really quick for those of you that don't know. Uh, costume Artist is a three-cost, one-reduction purple spirit. It's a Nightling type. Uh, level one for one core, 2K. Level two for three cores, 2K. Level three for four cores, 4K. Two cores. At all three levels. On level two. Hmm? Oh, Only, two cores, yeah. 3K. Yeah, yeah. One, two, four. Um, and then it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Um, at all three levels, when it attacks, you can destroy one of your other spirits to draw a card. And then at level two and level three, so starting at a two core commitment here, it has curse. <laughs> so this little spirit, uh, first off, the art is fucking awesome. It's uh, very cool. <laughs> it's, it's really cool art. Um, she is like a miniature uh, nemesis. So yes, like yeah. when you swing, um, you kill something and then you get to draw a card, which like on its own from like a card advantage standpoint is kind of neutral. Cause you're like destroying a spirit you already have on the board to get one in your hand. In fact, it's kind of a negative cause it's like you went from a board presence to just having a card that you don't even know what it is in your hand, but you have to think about her as like a cog in a machine. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what I referenced earlier. Like purple is this really well oiled machine. And I think she is just like another really great cog in that machine that just keeps it running so smoothly because you have like Lamorak, Aglavale, um, Beldegore, like there's just like, and Rotting Swamp, which is this purple nexus we've seen like come up time and time again um, after Depths was banned. And so like the way that she can just like kick off this chain reaction of like, all right, I kill, I swing in with this spirit. Uh, then I swing in with her and kill the spirit I just swung in with. I draw three cards. It comes back to my hand. Then I play Beldegore from the discard pile. I pop your thing. Now Beldegore is swinging in. And it's just nuts. Yeah. Like, when you really get it going, like, it just gets nuts. And if you want to watch Costume Artist in action, go watch the Pasadena stream um, and watch, like, 
Uh, don't watch the final match because Purple got like destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it got, it got, it got I mean, wrecked, unfortunately. Yeah, it it uh, yeah, it was. I mean, watch that match for other reasons, but if you want to see costume artists, then watch that match. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, it's a solid freaking card. Um, so I, I had this idea for it with uh, Alvar Plains, where when one of your vanilla spirits is destroyed. Um, if you want to pull up Alvar Plains, I'll read that really quick. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't know that this is actually I think it actually works better in just a pure purple build, but I do think there's some spicy tech here where it's like Alvar Plains is this three cost one reduction green nexus. For zero cores, it's level one, and for two cores, it's level two. When you place it, you can exhaust an opponent's spirit, which is just good um that's not why you're playing it but it's good yeah and then during your attack step when one of your spirits with no effects listed is destroyed select one of your spirits and refresh it so my idea here was like you could play it exhaust one of your opponent's spirits and then basically attack you know with costume artist repeatedly by alternating between vanilla spirits and costume artists and then just drawing cards the whole time um I haven't actually been able to get this to pop off, but that was kind of like my initial idea. And then when I saw it in the purple list at Pasadena, I was like, oh, it's just a solid. Maybe I was thinking about it too hard. Like, it's just a solid purple card that can just slot into the purple deck that already exists. So, yeah. But anyways, any thoughts from you all about Costume Artist? No, I mean, I agree. I actually, uh, I didn't say nothing, but I guess everybody had the same idea. When uh, we were talking about set three reveals, uh, I had seen that card and I was already... Mm -hmm. I said the same thing. I was like, it's a mini nemesis. I can get into the Rotten Swamp triggers. I can get into the Agaville triggers. It's also Dragonaga, basically by nature, Beldegor, so all the things you said. Um, so yeah. uh, it looks like a lot of us think alike. So, so it's like, so yeah, I thought it was a great <laughs> card. I didn't want to talk about it too much just in case people were kind of sleeping on it, you know? But yeah. Yeah. nobody was. So um, yeah, but that, that card, I mean, there's nothing negative about it. It's cheap. It does everything that purple wants, right? It wants to draw wants to force you to block and destroy something with curse and allows you to get stuff into the graveyard that you want to get in the graveyard. Uh, and, you yep. know, plus off that, like I said, Rotten Swamp, whatever, Belgrade triggers, Agaville triggers, anything else that wants to be destroyed, Elemental, whatever. So, um, yeah, it's just a great card. It's really just a great card, so. Yeah. All right. That's it for Johnson <laughs> yeah. <Martins. laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, sure. Yeah, big ditto. It's super okay. good. <laughs> all right angel how about you so one of my cards that i'm picking um and we're kind of just talking about it it's just because it's been in every single set deck once or twice and even in multiple different types of decks that's not the color it belongs to um and i love it because i think it's one of the probably mvp cards of purple starting early on and that's beldegore Hell yeah. I mean, Bel Beldegore is still in the meta. It's still in every single deck. I mean, it's a couple of top decks that uh, from Pasadena that it was on there, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And just Beldegore doing Beldegore things. I mean, I've seen it in Gale decks. Um, obviously, you know, it will, I think for the most part, it will always be running purple. Um, I've seen them in Rainbow decks. So, um, Beldegore, yep. man, just glad to see that card is something that, you know, I remember pulling a bunch of them. Uh, not the SPR version, but just like the regular one once that one came out. I mean, this card is really cool, but. I just didn't realize how relevant that card has been all year long, and it still is. And it's one of the, honestly, I think it's one of the better cards of, of Purple early on because it just does so much. It, it kind of keeps coming back. I've, I've had face people before that, you know, first thing they ask, can I see your graveyard? It makes people think twice before attacking into it. It has won me plenty of close games where, you know, someone goes ahead and attack, and I'm like, all right, cool, during the battle, something this again, and they're like, shit, now I exhausted everything, now I'm going to go into it and take your last life. So Or pop something that I need to pop because it's exhausted, you know? Uh, yeah. So I'm just excited to see that Beldegore has gone nowhere, and if anything, it just, it's almost like a stable, one of the stable cards, right, that you at least see in a sideboard somewhere. Um, like I said, I've seen Gale decks running it. I think one of the top... Eight decks or one sixteen top sixteen decks in Pasadena have Beldegore and the Gale deck for it, um, and it just makes sense, right? It's just such a very versatile card, honestly, in any color. I mean, I've seen yellow run Beldegore, so yeah. um, we had that purple yellow the Pro Tour that was running it. So um, yeah, I think that's one. I mean, it's one of my cards. Very simple. Um, I just think it's exciting that from set one, 
Bilderberg has lived on through three sets right now. And honestly, I think he'll live on for another set. Unless set four comes with something crazy that counters immortal, oh, immortal stuff, you know? Like, I don't know, maybe it's a nexus where, like, your opponent can't do anything during your attack step or something like that. Um, can't play I, I stuff think, from their trash or something? Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that, which, I mean, I who knows maybe maybe not but apart that from sounds that, like a blue nexus not gonna lie yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it, would, it wouldn't surprise me we'll yeah. see what happens but uh i definitely think you know better was just such a good card man and, and i'm glad to see it still live on and still kicking ass across multiple uh grand opens and new yeah. set grand opens so i like, I love to see it so what about you cam um real quick well, about Beldegore. yeah i want to talk about Beldegore. yeah <laughs> Uh, I, right, I, let's talk about Beldegore. Y'all didn't want to talk about costume artists, so let's talk about Beldegore. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that, yeah, Beldegore is becoming kind of like a poster child for the game itself. Yeah. You know, it's like one of those characters um, and one of those creatures that, you're right, is is transcending out of purple. It's transcending across three sets now. It's uh, just a really well-designed card that does thematically what its color wants to do very, very well. Uh, it's important to the lore, you know, it's one of the uh, original commanders of the army of the Phantasm March Kingdom, you know, <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> uh, and yeah, that SPR is beautiful. It's like one of the like first SPRs I remember seeing and being like, oh. I was wondering where you pulled that lore out of. And then I realized it says it in the flavor text of the card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the card. Uh, I was like, damn, how did you know that, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just think it's, it's really cool when a card like this comes along and to have it come along so early and just to keep seeing it. Yeah. I think that's a really cool call on, on your part here, Angel. And um, it's definitely one to be aware of, like as a game gets older um, and maybe I'm just in this headspace because of key forge. It's like, you do still need to be looking at all of the cards from earlier sets. Anything that is allowed to be built with will be built with in a healthy game and in a competitive game. And so Beldegore yeah. is one that will not go quietly into the night, even if set four has, you know, something that has uh, discard pile removal or or you can't play stuff from your discard pile. A card that comes to mind from Keyforge is one that was introduced in set three called Infernus. And it's just a four power disc creature that says on play, you can purge two cards from a discard pile. And you make your opponent lose Ember equal to the amount of Ember showing on those cards. And so very unassuming at first, but then all of a sudden you get to high level play and people are like scouring the secondary market and opening a bunch of packs looking for decks with multiple copies of Infernus. And uh, over the weekend, you know, it, it's a name that popped up a lot. It's like, what are we going to be playing? How do we counter Infernus? And so you have to be listening for those names. And I think Beldegore is exactly that. You you have to be constantly aware of cards like Beldegore. So just a cool card. Very cool card. It's a solid pick, Angel, because uh, I've been throwing Beldegore. It feels like I've been throwing Beldegore in every deck I build. Like, it doesn't matter what color it is. He's been going in. Yep. And I think part of it is actually because we've been building our decks to get around Floodstream. Uh, and so because I've been building around Floodstream, I've been adding a lot more fours uh, just so that the math is a little more awkward um, for Floodstream targets. And also to get around some of the like three cost, the three cost or lower removal that blue has. So yeah. I'm just like fours and fives feel really safe because it's like if I get Floodstreamed, they hit one thing and they paid five cores for it yeah. unless they're playing blue. But, you know, blue is going to do blue things anyways. But um, yeah, and then he comes down and he deals with cost-based removal as well. And because I'm playing lots of four and five costs to then put Beldegore in my deck, my opponents are doing the same thing. And then Beldegore hits all the fours. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. And very importantly, with the uh, yellow stuff we've seen going around and the red stuff, uh, he hits Bearded Eagle, he hits Hippocampo, um, he hits like just so many good cards. So. I mean, yeah, Beldegore awesome is pick. just one of those things that I, like I said, it does not matter. I mean, uh, granted, I'm obviously the purple player, but there has not been a single brew of purple that I have ever built, um, even if it's for fun, where Beldegore is not going in. Yeah, like that, like, like you said, yeah. Cam, he is the poster child. He is like the dark magician of like this right here. You know, yes. I think I'm gonna get a Beldegore tattoo. Like he's like, ah, Beldegore. You know, like, <laughs> hell like, yeah. Like, but, but it's just like he just. I mean, I don't know. It's just such a good card and. 
and I think I said it on uh, one of the podcasts at the Pro Tour, right? The games that I lost was because I didn't see Beldegore. And that's how important yeah. he is to, to what the deck wants to do, at least at the, at the build that I had. Um, that without seeing him, I, you know, I struggled a lot more than I should have because he gets a way out to there are a lot of different things. You can get a little bit more aggressive if you want to because, you know, you can get him back out. Um, multi easy trigger for Rod and Swam and just recycle him over again if you have enough four on the field. So, um, yeah, like I said, that's one of, that's one of my picks, and I think he will always be a, a card that, uh, unless he gets, you know, completely shut down by something else in the future, um, I don't ever see him probably not being played in one, you know, some for, uh, form or fashion uh, in a deck. So, yep. Hell yeah. Right, well, Kim, what's your pick? My first card is a vanilla spirit. Uh, of course. Which is definitely. <laughs> yeah. One, <laughs> I love vanilla spirits anyway. Um, I'm still trying to nail that Spring of Dorn deck, but we've been getting a lot of good vanilla support, and we're starting to get a reason to look at vanilla cards again because of Genbu, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I, I just love Fabled Beasts. So my card is Wonderland Card Griffin. Um, I've been really dialing in what I want my Fabled Beast deck to look like. Um, admittedly, it is a little different than uh, the ones that are winning. Uh, so we'll see if that's for better or for worse. But Wonderland Card Griffin, I'm starting to slot in a lot because I play mostly yellow. Like if I'm splashing anything in, it's just a couple spells here and there. I'm still sticking fully yellow, and I think that's where this card really... Uh, shines. It's those lower cost yellow too. A lot of two costs in my deck. Uh, Wonderland Card Griffin is a five cost, four reduction Otherlander Fabled Beast Yellow Spirit. Textless, like I said. At level one for one core, it's 4k. So it's already out of Burning Force range. Level two for only two cores, it's 5k. So still, pretty good. You pair that with out like of ritual Phantasmal fire Paradise. Range. Yeah, exactly. Out of Ritual Fire range. Pair that with Phantasmal Paradise, it's a 6k. Um... And at level three, for only four cores, it's 8K. So pretty solid stats. One, for a yellow card. Two, yeah. for... Um, sorry, Ocean Avenue just popped in my head when I said yellow card. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's a good stat line. It's, 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 uh, it's not too expensive to get up to that highest spot, and it can be a really good blocker for the dual eagles that Genbu is, you know... Uh, it gets over Dual Eagle at level three. That's the biggest point. It gets over Hippocampo. It gets over yep. uh, a lot of the other Fabled Beasts. And so at, at first glance, you're like, oh, neat. Another Fabled Beast, another other lander. Cool art. Uh, vanilla, though. But now, if you're going to see Genbu, especially for me in a mirror match, I'm going to want to see Wonderland Card Griffin. And I'm going to want to be able to play it for only one core so I can load it up and have it ready to defend against Dual Eagle. And so I don't know how many copies I'm running of this yet, but I just, I really like this card and I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, you want to go first, uh, Eric? Yeah, it's really solid. Um, the yellow build that I'm working on, I don't think I'm going to play yellow, but I just wanted to have one built to, to play test with. Uh, I run, I think, two of these. Um, and I, I don't know if you've had a chance to see some of the top yellow lists, uh, that have been going around. They do run this card. Okay. Uh, so I, I, it's like pretty, it's definitely pretty solid. I, I think, especially if you can play it for one and you can get those four cores on it, like you said, and then you can block dual Eagle. Like that's yeah. where you want to be. You want to block yeah. dual Eagle when they try to again, boo you. So yeah, really solid card. I don't know why battle spirits has this thing. And I know you love birds, Cam, so you're cool with it. I mean, I'm cool with it, too. I don't hate birds. But, it, like, for whatever reason, all the birds in this game are, like, some of the best cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I have no idea why, but they definitely yeah. are. Like, this thing Especially goes toe-to-toe -to -toe or talent-to-talent, -talent, if you will, with Bearded Eagle. Like, <laughs> it's a little more expensive, but it gets that, like, reduction curve, you know? And it, it just gets so yeah. big um, Yeah. that, like, I just... Yeah, I, I'm glad to see it in top list then, because uh, you said people are running it because I, they should be for a lot of reasons. Yeah, and, I um, mean, I, I agree with everything I said. I mean, eight thousand BP for only four cores, and especially if this guy's cost you one or even even two, um, that's insane. That's a high BP, um, and even like a level one and two. Uh, I mean, like you said, 
it, it does what it wants to do. But with being a Fable Beast, you know, obviously it goes synergizes with everything else that Fable Beast wants to do um, between Nexuses or whatnot else and Gambu and all the other stuff. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a solid card for even vanilla. Like, you know, I'm usually like not a big fan of vanilla cards because to me it's like, unless you're building like, say, like a true vanilla deck, because to me it's like, right, apart from BP stats, like what am I going to do with this thing? Um, but this is one of those cards where you, you definitely, you know, the exception to the rule, I think, uh, especially in, in the high top yellow deck that you were talking about, Eric, that I've seen some yeah. list about. Um, it does what it's supposed to do, and um, yeah, it's just it's a cool card. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to include vanilla cards in your deck, you're thinking about how to get around Genbu and Dual Eagle. Like, so this card does that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's awesome. Cool. All right, back to Eric. Uh, cool. Uh, let's talk about a card that I have seen uh, kind of fall off the face of the earth after set three, uh, even though its color has been topping at all of the events. And that card is Gigano Rex. Yeah, let's talk about Gigano Rex. Um, I just think it's really interesting that we've seen Dragno King take the spot at the spotlight at the top. Um, even some of the new like Trident Dragon has been showing up. Uh, Nova has appeared here and there in a few lists, yeah. um, which I mean, Nova's like we've talked about it before. He's like kind of one of the main like characters in this game, but. Gigano Rex was a, uh, I mean, he was the Jurassic King <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. And he was like, when you thought of red, you thought of pterosaurs. And I didn't think that the overwrapped on ban would actually do that much damage, but it seems like it's done a lot of damage to pterosaurs. Um, I don't, I don't know if people are even playing pterosaurs, so maybe that's part of it, but um, it's like, you know, we're seeing red at the top tables and like, making up a large majority of the top cuts at the past couple events, but Gigano Rex is nowhere to be found. Um, and I know he's an old card, but I'll just read him really quick. Uh, eight cost, six reduction, Pterosaur Spirit, um, 5K, 7K, 10K for one, three, and six cores. Um, when you summon him, you can count each symbol in your Pterosaur Emperor Beast Spirits on the field as two symbols, so you, like extra cost reduction. Uh, hype train for Jurassic King Gigano Rex. <laughs> and uh, then <laughs> if you only have Pterosaur or Emperor Beast on the field, you treat him as level 3. And at level 3, all of your spirits gain 3,000 BP during this turn when he attacks. And at level 2 and level 3, he has Confront. So he's just like a big boy with Confront who does some stuff. And I don't know, what, what do, why do you guys think he's fallen off? Is like the Overwrapted on ban that you know, like big of a deal or is it just that we've gotten better red spirits or I, I what's think going it's on? A number, I think it's a number of things, right? I mean, a part that we have better red spirits is what Rex want to do. It, it, it had an advantage in that format. There's way too many other cards now that Rex is not, I guess, as potent, I think you could say, because there's enough answers. Other decks have enough answers to those, uh, what Rex wants to do. And honestly, like, if you look at reds, I mean, Dragon King, right? Uh, that's one of the cards I was going to talk about earlier on. Like, we kind of knew Dragon King was going to be good. We were talking about it set two, right? Like, oh, this card's going to be good. It's just not there yet. Um, I mean, you got Dragon King. You got Battle Axe, uh, Apollo Dino, I think his name is. Yeah. Uh, the Tried Dragons, Nebula Dragon, um, Nova for sure. I mean, we saw that. We started that wave at the Pro Tour, right? So I just yeah. think that, and I don't know if it's just Rex himself, right? Like, but maybe just that play style of Rex, you know, how Pterosaur plays. It's not yeah. as you know as aggro, obviously like any aggro, but it's not as viable. And really, if you think about it, if you read Rex FX, you know, like it's cool for what it wants to do, but apart from that, what does what else does it do? Not much, right? You you yeah. pop that thing or you control how many pterosaurs they have on the field that it makes it harder for them to summon that. Like there's way better things and way better synergy that Red has now with other cards, these newer cards are coming out. Um, you know, some of these spicy brews of rainbow, um, that I just don't think it's it, it ain't a dominant thing that it was like set one, right? Because I think honestly, like even set two, I think Rex was a little bit relevant for a little bit, like maybe early on, but it kind of like faded out, like right in between set two and everything else kind of shifted to everything else. Um, with like yeah. purple white and all that, obviously, and then uh, obviously set three. I mean, I don't, I don't think we saw a single person play, and I could be wrong, but I don't recall a single person playing Rex at the Pro Tour either when the few red decks that I saw. So um, yeah, which you know, which blew me. Like the first few games I played against Red. I thought it was playing Rex. I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is going to be yeah. easy because you know, I was seeing some of the, the lower spirits yeah. 
And then when the, when the game will be over, I will ask him, hey, I didn't see Rex at all. Oh, yeah, I'm not even playing Rex. I'm playing Nova. I'm playing this, you know? So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it just shows that, you know, Rex is a good card. I mean, rest in peace, Rex, but I'm sure he'll maybe come back later on. But it's just where the meta is now, the card pool that we have now for red, and I think some of the answers that other car, uh, colors have, Rex is not as scary as it used to be during set one. We were very limited format, you know, and very yeah. limited things. So at least that's my opinion. I mean, I can completely off the wall to that, but that's just what I think maybe happened. I I don't have a ton to say about red because um, that's still, I think, the color I have the least amount of experience with. But I, I will say <laughs> it is a bummer to see him go away because I've always compared him as like if Nova is blue eyes, uh, white dragon, Jurassic King is black or er, red eyes, black dragon. Red eyes. Um, yeah. which I always liked red eyes. Um, so like when I did look at red, I was, I was very much looking at Gigano Rex and I think it's super cool. I, I wouldn't be surprised if what happens in set four, we silently get a very small, tiny textless emperor beast or pterosaur. And then Rex is going to come right back in. That's my prediction. Yeah. Especially yeah, just... with them cycling out over Raptodon. Like, we're, we're going to get yeah. a very quiet, like, oh, yeah, I'm a little pterosaur, and you're going to see it a thousand times in your packs, and you're not going <laughs> to think about it right away, but then you're going to go back and be like, oh, wait, Giganorax is back. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe, like, some other red card that's more in that mid-range territory of, like, a five to seven cost that sure. does some really awesome stuff, but it also just so happens to be an Emperor Beast or Pterosaur, and then yep. people are playing around, they, they're playing this mid-range red, and then they're like, hang on a second, mm-hmm. Gigano Rex is a card. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta watch those traits when they come out. Yeah. All right, that's all I wanted to say about Rex. Cool. What's your all card, right. Angel? So, my card's another card that I've been on the bandwagon for since set <laughs> one. Oh. Um, and, I, and I was playing it for a long time, you know. Um, and now it's being played, I think, in almost every deck I've seen. And that is Barrel Slash. That's I mean, right. Barrel Slash. Oh, is, yeah. You have been you, you singing remember, its praises. I've been, yeah, I've been about Barrel Slash since day one. And uh, I think that's one of those cards now that, and uh, you know, it's taking over the this yeah. meta at least, like, Every you, deck runs it like for the most. You part, convinced you know? me. You convinced me to play this card at uh, yeah. Tulsa. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. I've been so sliding just, it in to deck. Yeah, I mean, so I think Feral Slash is one of those cards, kind of like what it was, you know, in set two, where like you had some cards that came out of set one, where like, oh yeah, this card's really good now. Um, and I think this is the meta currently where Feral Slash is really shining and doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, early on it did it too, but I think people were not, you know, stopped playing some of those Nexuses that were on set two. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love that card. The card's just very good, very versatile. I think it's almost like, dare I say, a staple that's kind of needed currently, right? I mean, you have a lot oh. of Nexuses that you want to contend with. Hurricane Highlands, a, a freaking yellow, bean yellow. Um, all the purple so, ones. Uh, all the purple, all the purple, you know. No yeah. That. So it's just one of those cards. It's, it's almost like, burning force right like yeah. part two like it's just like you want to play it um and it's really cheap i mean yeah if you play it from the burst zone to do what, what it wants to do and or you can play from your hand for four so and in the meta too that it's very rainbowish right like um depending how how your deck is built it could be even cheaper but i think for a slash is one of those cards like i said i'm glad to see from set one once again be very dominant now in this meta um because i've always thought it was such a good card i remember when i i think i got a promo pack i can't remember where, we, where it came out of but uh it was the was corset pretty, it was a corset pack right and i was like mm-hmm. yeah man this card's really good i thought like, i don't know why people are not playing this card and I, and I played it for like quite a few uh tournaments that i went to and it did well every time i saw it and it would catch people off guard back then you know now yeah you know, it's almost expected obviously but it's good though right because you're gonna probably second guess yourself when you're gonna play that Nexus because, like, man, they have a Feral Slash in hand, so or you know, in a burst. So, um, yeah, I, that'd be my, my other pick, Feral Slash for sure. I love to see it; such a cool card. Yeah, it just splashes um, for a little cheaper than Burning Force, also outside of color. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you're running red and you're running both of these, like, you you have a lot of answers for a lot of little things, especially in the early game. Um, and you know, with red, like, sometimes that's all you need to push in that that early victory. So. Yeah, big fan of it. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about it. Although all I, all I'll say is like, yeah, you convinced me to play it at Tulsa, yeah. and then ever since I've just gotten my uh, I've just gotten my Nexuses obliterated by this card one too many times. <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. I, I love Girl Slash. You know, this this is this is the episode where like 
which is mind fucking people. I have nothing to say. It's like, I, yeah, we're done. I, it's like, I will say though, this card has maybe one of the most controversial names of any card in the game. Yeah, because I've heard it pronounced <laughs> so many different ways. Like, I I never know if it like I think it might be like I don't know what feral? this word is. Feral, 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 feral. Feral, feral, feral slash feral. Ferrari? Feral slash. Is it, it's not an I at the end, right? Yeah, no. Uh, Will Ferraro slash. <laughs> I just watched Ferraro Elf slash. last night. <laughs> when I go when I Googled Ferraro or however Ferrar Feral, uh it autocorrected it to Ferrari, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean it is red, so it is Ferrari yeah. red. I, so, I mean um... I would look, I would just assume it'd be Feral because this guy looks freaking pissed off yeah. with a crazy yeah. battle axe, like he has a gravy, so he's like a feral guy, like he's going crazy, but you know, granted, guys, look, English is my second language, so I'll probably be my Latin ass mispronouncing that. That's <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> honestly, that's what I think it might be. Um, is that it's it's probably a play on translation from Japanese to English because, like, mm. I, I look at Onyx Bird Yada Gloss, and oh. that comes from Yada Grasu in Japanese, and so I don't know if that's like. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I'm just assuming it's something about the translation of it. That makes okay. sense. So I think it would be like feral, but it's feral. like feral. I don't know. Feral. But or it's just a made up <laughs> word. Who knows? I think. No, go ahead. I was just saying, like, we. Go ahead. Go this time. When you flip it up from the burst, you just go feral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rabies coming out of your mouth. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like, most competitive players have the time to even pronounce the card. You just see it, you know what it yeah. does. It's like whatever. You're like, so and like, I play nobody's, this. Yeah, nobody's like really reading the cards like in Yu-Gi-Oh. I summon <laughs> blue eyes, white dragon. Like you just, you just know what it is. It's like, all right, whatever. Go ahead, yeah. do your thing. That's... <laughs> the only card, and I'm because I always bring her up in every podcast. The only card that people still read, and we're in set three. It's my girl, Maduke. Yep. Every time. Read <laughs> yep. that card. Yes, she's a bitch, but read it. <laughs> yep. I'm always, and then every time I'm like, so if I take damage. It... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. Then, Wait does a it minute. go to the trash or does it go to the void? Yeah. Like, Wait a minute. So if I void. try to kill her, it hurts me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, why am I here? Yeah, like, wait, all you little guys have blood curse now, too? Like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, so they had the same effect? I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, Cam, what you got? My second card is in theme, a little boring, but I, I want to get some discourse about it. This is Peril Beast Kionkui. It is a five-cost, three-reduction Fabled Beast Yellow Spirit, textless. Level one for one core is 4K. Level 2 for 3 cores is 7k. So, obviously, now I know that, like, you know, people are running card griffin. But why not Peril Beast Kionkui? I considered him in my yellow build. Yeah. I was between the two. Right, and I'm then looking I went at both. The... Yeah. Why do we think one is going hmm. over the other? Hmm. It's a good question, because he's not that expensive and honestly you can get him pretty high up he's only one bp less than the other at a lot smaller cores right so that's a good point and he's fable beast so right um, that's a good question i'm i'm not sure why this is not going over the other let me look maybe well no because the other one's what slash well, other lander but if, that doesn't have to do anything with it so. right um I mean, if they have a Phantasmal Paradise and you do not, this trades with Dual Eagle, whereas the other one can still block it. That's so fair. maybe that's part okay. of it. But I mean, I don't know that that you know niche situation is like good enough reason. I I was honestly torn on this too, Cam, because when I was okay. building my yellow deck, I was like, I need a vanilla spirit that's not going to get you know Burning Forest away. Right. Uh, that I can use to block in case I get Genbu'd. Yeah. Um, and also just like to combo off with my Nexus and with my Genbu. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm honestly pretty torn too. I don't really know which one is better. I guess maybe you get that extra cost reduction on the other dude. But then you but... have to put that extra core to get it to level three anyway. 
Yeah, yeah that's it's true. like, and I know that's just the mechanics of creating two cards to make them do different things to to still be different, but it's just yeah. that I don't know. Like I, I'm struggling to to decide because every time I look at the other one, I go, "Oh, well, this does this, and this one doesn't." And so I don't know if I'm just getting stuck in an infinite loop of like analysis paralysis, but I, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird that, especially cause they're both in set three and I yeah. opened a lot yeah. of them. Um, I, I mean, don't it's know a good which question. one I prefer. I, I don't know. Honestly, like, I mean, the only thing of looking at it, if I had to say you have more options, I guess with the bird, right? Cause you can have. 4K one core, 5K for two cores, and 8K for four cores, where this one's just one or the other, right? Yeah. Um, but maybe that's what makes the other one better. Like, it gets it one one BP more than this one could uh, with one, less, one, you know, one less extra core. Um, it could be at 5K for two compared to, the, you know, either 4K or 7K. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing I can, and like with Eric's point, maybe the extra cost reduction, you know, is even yeah. cheaper. But they're, they're not that far apart from each other where i could see you know either or being played um but i don't know so, somebody knows the answer to that question that's a very good question maybe it's uh, something that we're not thinking about i'd love but. for that have, yeah to go to the discord I'm, i may have just figured something out I, okay the griffin gets around somersault because it can get to third level, whereas Somersault mm. stops level two specifically. I don't know that that uh, card is being played as much. I think sometimes it's like a one of in some of the yellow decks. Yeah. Um, That's so, a good point. Yeah. Uh, Kwangui can cannot physically get to a level three. Uh, yeah. So that does matter. Yeah. But cool. Well, yeah. If, if and if yeah, if people in the Discord want to chime in or anybody listening or watching wants to give their opinion on uh, the difference between card Griffin and peril beast. Let me know. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm still on the fence about both. I do like what, what you said, angel, the, the option there of going between four five and eight, rather than just between four and seven for oh, one less yeah. core commitment. Um, and I do believe that, yeah, that, that reduction curve on Griffin is better typically in a fully yellow deck because you're going to have all those little like two costs out there and right. you can just drop this out of nowhere. So I'll, uh, I'll play around with them and I'll see and I'll report back. I'm sure, but yeah, it is cool. Try both. It is cool. Yeah. yeah. He looks badass. I do like it. The artwork for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. He does. It reminds me of the, cool, uh, so. Raikou, that legendary Pokemon. Yep. Yeah. So, ah, I, I mean, love my fabled beast. the card Griffin has fucking playing cards for wings. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that motherfucker. That that dude's giving you paper cuts though. Like this, this dude's yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, it's like, it's a battle. We'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. But yeah, that's that's it for me. All right. Um, my last card here is going to be uh, a card that I think people are sleeping on. I I don't think that our particular group is necessarily sleeping on it because I think we've been talking about him quite a bit. That would be Giant King Randolph. Yeah. He is Oh my a gosh. It's probably my cost. favorite set three card. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> so he's so good. good. He's a five cost, two reduction, blue war god spirit. Uh, one core for uh, at level one, he's 4K. Four cores for level two, he's 6K. And six cores for level three, he's 7K. At all three levels, he crush. He does crush plus one, <laughs> and then at all three levels, he, uh, whenever he attacks, for every level he has, select one of your opponent's spirits that costs three or fewer and destroy it. I am not going to give away uh, the spice of like what some of these spirits were that I killed. Uh, I was playing against Andrew the other night, um, but he had this really wide board that was like mostly level three spirits. And he was kind of like really hitting me hard and I was having to ice shield like to kind of make my way through. And then I drew into Randolph off of my Volcanic Canyon. I was playing a rainbow deck, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I dropped Randolph and just wiped three of his spirits off the board. And and in that moment, both of us were just like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, Randolph is what you know, he is the art type. He's supposed to be a war guy. Yeah. That dude is not. I got wrecked by this guy. At uh, Pro Tour, when we're doing the, I think it was either the sealed one or the draft, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, they, I was like, he's just such a, I mean, you're crushing 
And you're also blowing up my field. Like, it is ridiculous yeah. to get over this guy. So Randolph okay. sold blue for me. Like, this card, like, from the very first time I put him into play in testing, like, it's just, he's so fun. He perfectly encompasses what blue is capable of. The crush plus one feels like icing on the cake, man. Like, even yeah, if his yeah. crush was regular, it's that second ability that triggers at all three levels. Like, yeah. this is the first blue with a high level three cost that you want to see cores on. Yep. Um, and it just is, it just does so much right now. Like, at any point in the game, it does a lot. And, like, I, I want to yeah, see more every cards time. on Randolph. Yeah, every, every time. Every time he attacks. Like, every that's time. just crazy about it. Like, you know, Belgor is like on trigger when he's summoned. This guy is, every time I swing in, if you do have something to try to protect you, I am about to blow it up if it's three or fewer. So, yeah. Um, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where, like, it kind of challenges people to probably play, you know, four cost spirits or higher because. You know, if this becomes very relevant or there's a, a point where top decks are, you know, this is one of the issues, what, what option do you have but to play four spirits or higher? Because, yep. and then what does that do to the game, right? Because now your curve, your right. curve is a lot later. You know, you're playing more of a mid-range game. Um, so, yeah, this card is definitely a, a scary card. I mean, it, like you said, it does what Blue wants to do. And, you know, Blue has a lot of, like, what I call them, like, secret weapons that when they come out and they do what they're supposed to do, like, Mandela is another one I can think of. Yeah. When that guy comes out, he just wrecks you. It's just like, all right, mail this many amount of cards from your deck. Like, You're boom. Like, huh? And that could change the whole, yeah, that could change yeah. the whole aspect of the game. So and you um, can't do anything like it. about it. Like, no, yeah. it's so that's, good. That's why I picked Randolph, because I, I really think he's, people are so hyped on Apollo Dinos. Don't get me wrong, Apollo Dinos is like an amazing card. I love Apollo Dinos. I think Randolph in some situations is just as good. I like, oh yeah, for sure. He he Absolutely. can I I also think there's this unexplored space where a lot of people are afraid to dive into blue at all except for grabbing cards like Strong Draw or Floodstream. Um I think they're but missing out. I think there's an I haven't quite figured it out yet, but if like Battle Beast Bull Top Dog, where every time you crush, if you crush a spirit, you get to place a core. Um, yeah. Like I think there's almost this. You know how like Worker Ant Man came onto the scene and he was just played in green, and then when people realized like, oh, he ramps really well for any deck. Like I almost feel like Blue has some cards like that with like Bull Top Dog and like Randolph and maybe a couple other crush spirits where like. You're not really trying to crush the opponent. You're just trying to like maybe mess up some of their plans, like get a couple ice shields into the trash if you can. I but really, always you're see like, ice shields come off of Randolph. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always. I don't. It's just ice, pure coincidence. Milling an ice shield. Milling Woo! an ice shield is uh, a good feeling. It's drugs. For the person who's milling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, drugs. But I, I think there's a space here where, like, there's some blue cards, to Angel's point about, like, secret weapons. Like, I think there's some blue cards that we should be slotting into uh, non-blue decks. Even if you're not going for Rainbow, but, like, I think, like, Randolph is pretty expensive, so maybe he's not quite fit for that. But I don't know. I, I just think there's some unexplored space here that I think we need to check out. I'm yeah. just saying, no. early game, he costs as much as burning force almost you know you still have to put that one extra core to keep him alive but mid game like if you top deck this guy and you're like starting to get down on board and you have the cores you can flip the script pretty pretty quickly and again yeah, yeah. that crush is just icing on the cake man like because he's crushing for two for one core like up to four cards off the top of the deck and yeah. killing a couple of things like he works so well in blue with allegro is what i think of because you're crushing a bunch, you're killing a bunch. That's a lot of cards in the discard pile. But just, you're right. Like, even outside of blue, tech a Randolph in there, and it's going to just completely do something to your opponent. At the very least, they're just going to be like, yeah. what the fuck? And that's yeah. fun. Put some Randolphs in your sideboard, and then if yeah. you notice in game one that your opponent's playing lots of three-cost spirits, just side them in, and then just surprise them <laughs> yeah. well randolph is one of those cards too where i can see like like in a late game a late game event right let's just say mm -hmm. all right your opponent used three absolute ice shields <laughs> you summon randolph you swing you see his last absolute ice shield 
you're good. You know you got that game in the bag now. That game changes. <laughs> like, that yeah. game you changes have immediately. Else. Yeah, yep. you yeah. have nothing else to really protect you. Now I'm just going to keep swinging in with no, I don't care what burst you put. I know it's not uh, absolute ice shield, so I'm going to keep putting that more pressure on you. Yep. And it just, I mean, like I said, and it happened to me, uh, I think when we were playtesting one of the times, uh, with Blue Light, when I see absolute ice shield go to my discard pile, it's like so heartbreaking. It's like, oh my God, it's like, I need you. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, why? I love it. I was like, but yeah, it's yeah, Randolph is definitely good. Yeah. Like it, like it, like it. All right, that was my last card. All right, so my last card is more of a, and I don't want to say it's disappointing, man, because <laughs> I done well with it, for like fun playtesting with it with set two. Um, it's actually a set two card, um, and I really wanted to do well, and I hopefully, maybe with set four, or maybe I'll get crazy and come up with something with it, but it's uh, Ten Sword Saint Star Blade Dragon. Good. Tell me why I, I should play this card, because I have two of them, and one of them is the SPR. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. he's badass. So, I mean, I, I just think he... he There's something there with him, right? Um, It's just a matter of having the other components you need to really kind of get those chains of effects. Like, the ability to destroy something, obviously, and maybe it's a 3,000 or fewer BP that kind of makes this card not be so good, because most spirits now are getting in the 4,000 range and higher, and maybe that's what this card's, like, maybe not viable, but, I mean, you can draw, you can destroy, you can synergize this with anything. He looks badass. I mean, talking about the SPR, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, I, I'm not going to give up on him. I think that this card at some point it's going to be relevant, and I'm hoping to set four. Maybe there's some more Star Dragon support or something going on with the whole Nova um, theme going again. Uh, that this card will come out because he's an, you know, an X-Ray, right? And they made an SPR version of him, so I'm assuming... like I like to think, like, if you took the time to make an SPR version of this card, you he's going to be good it. at some point. Yeah. Right, he's going to be good at some point. Um, and his effect's not that bad, like I said. Obviously, there's better cards for destruction. You got Dragon King, some of these other things. And I think that's the only thing, if I had to, like, analyze this card, I'd be like, well, 3,000 fewer BP, like, eh, whatever. Like, it's very rare, um, unless you're playing, like, some slow-curve aggro deck. Um, yeah. And by the time you see this guy, you probably have taken care of that board for the most part. Um, but if you can summon him early on, you know, with a Big Bang Energy, like which I have, I think, to play testing against Eric. Like, he did some decent work yeah. every time I had him, and I enjoyed seeing him, and he did what he was supposed to do. Um, his stats are not bad. I mean, 4K, 7K, and 10K, so yeah. he's a pretty big guy, you know? He has Awaken and a Flash Speed as well, so he just has three different effects that do a little bit of everything. You can draw, you can pop, and you can move course around. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised I have not seen more of him, and I'm hoping that... Some somebody will break the code if it's not me, or you know, or maybe it just needs a little bit more juice on step four to just give him the extra edge. Um, because it's just such a badass card. Like, yeah, I love the way it looks. It, it just it does a lot of cool things. It does what Red wants to do. Um, it's a Star Dragon, which I think is very cool and prevalent. And obviously, with Star Dragons kind of being the main thing out of set one. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just, it's kind of disappointing not to see this card really pop up at all <laughs> anywhere i don't think it's even been play tested once uh apart from like fun games right i don't think i've ever seen it in a real deck yeah um anywhere so uh it's interesting i wonder when it will be a shine i'm sure it'll shine at some point so maybe next year yeah i'll keep an eye on it for sure there's got to be some reward for reading that long name yeah <laughs> it's, it's got to. i mean yeah. it's got to be you know what would have made him even better is if they made his name longer and they had called him Ten Sword Saint Starblade Siege Worm Dragon. Nova. <laughs> yeah, Nova. The third. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <Like>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, anything else, Eric, or am I good to go to the last no. card? Okay. This no, I'm one, all out of jokes. It might be a <laughs> yeah. It might be a weird one to end on, but I've been looking at a Another white... vanilla spirit? <laughs> yeah, almost. Um, a white nexus. Ooh. This is from okay. set one. It's Forest of Steel Leaves. So uh. it's a four cost, two reduction, white nexus. Uh, level one and two. If you have a burst card set, your white nexuses cannot be destroyed by the effects of your opponent's red spirits or magic. Level two for one core, it says, when one of your spirits is destroyed by your opponent, select one of their nexuses and return it to their hand. So the reason I even started looking at this is because of uh, Seabed Lighthouse, right? 
Mm. Um, Seabed Lighthouse is that new blue nexus that says, uh, let me pull it up real quick, just so I don't paraphrase and get it wrong. During either attack step, your opponent cannot use magic cards in their hand that do not share a color with any of the symbols on their field. So I'm thinking about big things getting bounced, right? So I'm looking around, like, how to play around that and also, like, how to reduce the ice shield, how to reduce some of my own white bouncing um, and to keep stuff on the field. Plus, if if that lore set, axe, worm, dragon, or whatever gets to be popular and starts running around in some decks uh, that basically does the same thing that Seabed, but for the burst slot, I, I was just looking at some white nexuses, and this one keeps popping up. And I keep trying to find a spot with it in my build. But I just think for only one core to get to level two, um, it's it's kind of all right. Like when one of your spirits is destroyed by your opponent, like at any time, you select one of their nexuses and return it to their hand. That Am I like giving way too much power to this card? What do you guys think? It's a weird card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a weird card, right? And... um. This card reminds me of a uh, another white nexus card, uh, far farfong something where like yes, far you can pop land. it, yeah, like you can pop it. It gets like three thousand BP, but then at level two, I think anytime your opponent summons it, when summon spirit, you gain a core, I think so, or something from the void. Yes. So that that effect I get. Um, so it's weird. Like I, it, it's. I could see this card being for its level two more than its level one, right? Yeah, for um, sure. Because it's really only against red or magic. But I could see the level two where now you you know you basically have an always active dream bomb, right? You constantly, all right. You want your nexus to be alive, and you can't destroy my opponent, right? So you can almost like push this card into an like, aggro style too. Like you can just keep pushing with your white spirits. Um, well, actually, it doesn't have to be a white spirit. It could be any spirits. It looks like when one yeah. of your spirits, yeah. So it's any spirit. Yeah. So honestly, yeah. So it's now either like. That's either why I was looking block. at it. So yeah, I could see that. You know what? That changes a couple things because now you either chump block me, cool. If you have a nexus, I'm trying to get rid of, bounce that. It allows me to save my cores, not have not having to use you know like burning force or furl slash or anything else for something else because I have this on play. Um, or you know I can get a plus office. So yeah, I think this card you might be onto something. This might be something to uh, definitely keep an eye on. And honestly, for four and the one core on it, that's that's not bad. So sure. I could definitely see this like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to steal your idea, Cam. I kind of like the fish. I'm going to I'm I'm play test this with like yeah. a little yeah, purple just, build I'm thinking about. At it's, the very it least, sense. keep it like at the front of your mind. Like it, yeah. Again, it's like I was talking about, it's one of those set one cards that could fade away into obscurity, or yeah. it could be exactly what you need to get the edge over somebody. Yeah. This well, and to your game. point, too, like it counteracts those cards that you know don't allow you to play anything else if you don't have the certain color on board. Mm -hmm. Um and this is a perfect card to have on board because one is a nexus. So if your opponent wants to get rid of it, they're gonna have to, you know, either furl slash it or you know, burning force it. But two, like you're really just kind of putting extra pressure where like you can bounce or you know against yellow, right? Like I'm gonna bounce your blessed cathedral. You're from Tassel Paradise right now. Yeah. Um, set you, set you back a turn, you know, maybe depending on what it is. Um, yeah, I like this card. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, um, nexuses have become really prevalent in the meta right now yeah. with Bless yeah. Cathedral, Volcanic Canyon, Rotting Swamp. Like, you're seeing lots of nexuses all over. I think the only thing about this card that would make it so much better is if it didn't specify white nexuses on the top part. Like, right. I wish it just said any nexus. But at the same you time, though... You will protect this, I think, though, right? So. Yeah, yeah, you'll protect this one. Yeah, um, like, it can't be Feral Slashed if you have a burning. Oh, yeah, or Burning Force. Never mind, that first effect yeah. is really amazing. Never mind, because also... Well, it's, other... it's like the first effect covers itself, and then the second yeah. effect is like, and while you're, you know, trying to keep me alive, let me help you out. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the if you look at the top red list that were just played, like... They're just using in-house Nexus removal because it's they're playing red. So right. they had like I think they some of the lists I think had like nine to twelve Nexus removal cards being like three Feral Slash, three Burning Force, three Andromeda, or like sometimes four ofs of some of those. Yeah. So it's like this immediately shuts that down if you're only playing white Nexuses. Um and then also you can bounce their volcanic canyon, which is like inconvenient for them to put it back down. Um, 
But at the same time, like, then they don't get the draw ability at the start of their next turn. They have to kind of, like, reset. Right. Um, or you could bounce. There, a lot of them are playing that new, like, two-cost nexus, which, like, you know, it costs them one core, basically, to play it. So it's not a big deal, but could kind of set them back a little bit, gets rid of some of their cost reduction, makes it harder for them to, like, crack back at you a bit. So I could really see this being an interesting meta call um, if you have some, like, reason to play some white. Yeah. And yeah, like, I think, yeah, yeah, I think it will be. I mean, honestly, that's a good point. I mean, this is a good card, Cam. I'm kind of like looking at it more and more now and thinking <laughs> about a lot of different things. Because I mean, the one thing I noticed about like White Nexus, right? Like at first glance, you don't think much about them, but then yeah. you think about cards like Rocket City, Infinity Mothership, Fortress Metropolis, right? Those cards became like extremely viable um, in a lot of the uh, decks, uh, you know, previous sets before um so i would not be surprised to see this card somehow be incorporated and i might be the first one apart from you <laughs> it's like it's, I, I do I, i'm thinking about some things with this card and honestly like yeah i could see it and like you said if some reason the lore set guy comes viable or, or some other you know lighthouse crap card that comes out of blue that's freaking annoying um yeah i, I kind of yeah it's a good call man so i honestly i i probably seen this card like three times and i didn't even like think twice about it so that ah, cool yeah <laughs> so it's like so it's well, a good cool. call well i appreciate y'all uh talking about it because yeah i just i was putting i forget what that guy's putting together the other night but i was like what kind of what white nexus can i put in here to reduce like suppression and and ice shield and like do i need it and so yeah i i'm, I'm just looking at it we'll see i might eat my words but we might it might be tech. I don't know. Dude, and what's crazy? Like, that's from set one. Like, exactly. I'm remember, like, yeah. I'm yeah. 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 this card. Like, I don't even recall this card. It's like, I'm going to go look at my binder. Like, where do I have you at? Like, yeah. I don't even, like, I must have not even, like, honestly, like, looked at it. I guess I was cool <laughs> another Nexus. And, like, I didn't even read it. Like, right. <laughs> and it looks like the other ones, you know? Like, yeah, it's just yeah. totally forgettable. I'm just saying, like, if they printed it, it's got to be printed for a reason. And I don't know. I don't know. There's something about it that I, I I really really like, but we'll see how good it is. But yeah, that's yeah, it. I, Those are my yeah, three. I like it. I like it. Good choices. Cool. Well, anything else you guys want to add here at the end, or are we uh, getting ready to boot scoot and boogie on out of here? I guess we'll do all those things. All right. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Absolute BSS. Um, you can find us, Absolute BSS Pod, uh, at Gmail, on Twitter, on YouTube, um, and obviously anywhere that you're listening to this in podcast form. Um, we're going to keep training for Atlanta coming up and of course worlds in january 2024 so thank you for coming along on the ride with us join our discord um the link will be in any description for any episode of this that you can find uh come on in say hi and uh we're doing a lot of like it's just really fun it's super active all the time you can you can always hop on that discord and and see what people are talking about spicy deck list spicy tech champer chump all of that good stuff um, and also subscribe to us on the YouTube channel if you don't mind. Uh, it helps us out. Um, and once we get to 100, we're going to do a, a fun, goofy little video called Battle Shots Saga where we uh, play one game where the soul cores are shots. And we'll play a couple other games where we're just out of our minds. So some fun, <laughs> some fun, <laughs> goofy buckets, decks there. the buckets ready. Here's yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> I play Ferrari <laughs> Slash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, oh man but yeah uh, yeah we're like 20 something subscribers subscribers away from that now yeah, yeah. so that'll Crazy. be fun it, it i just yeah any excuse to have a little little fun on the channel and upload <laughs> yeah, some yeah, yeah. goofy extra videos any excuse to drink some alcohol why exactly like, this will work <laughs> like tax right off <laughs> exactly <laughs> tax right off <laughs> oh man but all right well until next time i'm cameron that's angel that's eric thank you all for listening and uh we'll see you next time bye bye see ya